Pallet to Pallet with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from Sanderson Farms. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you. Most people don't think of painting as a dangerous profession, but last season, you almost got run over. Oh, it, watch it, watch it. it was just rolling. You almost got run over. Yeah. You almost got squished against the wall in San Gimignano. I collapsed my easel instead of collapsing myself. <laughs> this season, you ran into some bad actors. Yes, that was in a park. I was early in the morning, and it is a city. And like a lot of cities, there are areas you kind of just need to be careful of. So go ahead and listen to yourself. These people started circling us, and uh, I was painting a sculpture of a lion and a serpent killing a deer. And somewhere in the middle of that painting, I thought, I might be that deer. If you want two Americans who love Italy, we're your guys. You know, I really fell in love with Italy before I even went there just through the paintings I studied. Neither one of us are Italian experts. We mangle the language almost in every sentence, but we love this place. Turning people on to the food, to the culture, mm -hmm. to the art, and just the entire experience. It's a great place. We're still learning about Italy. It's great to watch people experience this. We went over there and we fell in love with it. And we love sharing it with other people. So I'm born with this name. Some people think, you know, his name's St. John, that's kind of cool. Here's the thing, it's an abbreviation in your last name. It's got a period and it's two words and nobody ever gets it right. St. Jonah. One of the lessons. It's a story of my life. I've been dealing with it for 56 years. Especially in Italy, they don't get it right. This is what happens. At least the bus is here. That's all we're worried about. It could be Street John. I've been called that. <laughs> so that's the thing. So on the bus, you know, again, they get the name wrong, bye, bye, bye. Uh, but everybody knew where to go. When we got on the bus, we headed from Venice down to Bologna. Everybody have a good time in uh, Venice? Yeah. All right. We, uh, Bologna, Italy is what a lot of people call the food capital of Italy. Our friend David Trigiani, who is our uh, expert on Italy, would say, Therefore, the food capital of the world. He ought to know. Mm. We're in Bologna. We've got about a 10 or 15 minute uh, drive to the hotel, depending on traffic. Uh, the Via Roma, the road, the Via Roma. Uh, goes from Bologna to Rome. It's an old ancient road. This is an old, old city too. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a college town, but it's a, it's a college town where the college is 700 or something years old. So Bologna is a university town, the oldest university in all of Europe. It's a town of 26 miles of colonnades. Oh my. And so if the weather's bad, you are set in Bologna because you just walk under that and it's so beautiful. You get all the arches and, and, and all this old world feel. But on top of that, world-class food and world-class markets. So if you're a foodie and you go to Italy, you've got to go to Bologna. Bologna, since it is a university town, has a lot of young people, so it has a very young feel as well as a very ancient feel to it. It's, it's, it's both new and old. Yeah, and that university's been there since 1088. Wow. So you've got all of that history and all of that old world feel and style, but then you've got these kids, these college-age kids, when we've seen a lot of protests there when we've been there. My first Occupy. Off. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, that's my second Occupy. Yeah, I think. the first one was Venice. Yeah, because they thought I was part of the Occupy movement, and uh, I wasn't. I was just <laughs> painting there, and all of a sudden these tents sprouted around me with a newscaster. He said, I don't care. It's the ponytail. <laughs> he said, I'm not a part of this protest. I'm here painting. He said, it doesn't matter. Make a good story. <laughs> that's what he told me. It is, it's the pony town. We're in a beautiful city here. We just got here a little while ago. You and I have been to Bologna several times before this visit. And all of the times we go, there are these great markets. You got great butcher shops, uh, produce markets, homemade pasta, cheese shops, all of that stuff. And, and you walk around the old streets of Bologna and it's everywhere. This visit, I was so excited. As you know, I'm a huge fan of Italy. Really? I go to the Italy in New York and the Italy in Chicago. And for those who don't know, Italy is a, uh, a place that has about four or five different Italian restaurants. It's an Italian market. It has meat, it has cheese, it has wine, it has books, everything Italian. So the owners of Italy came up with the amazingly brilliant idea to open basically what is a theme park. Man. for Italian food, wine, and culture. I had read about it for about two years as this thing was building and was really excited about it. And uh, the beauty of it is, is, is our guests were with us about two weeks after that place opened. So we were able to take them to this brand new theme park for Italian food. I wanna go ride the Matterhorn first at the eatery here in, in Fico, Fico. It was Disney World in Italy with Italian food, wine, culture, everything. <laughs> and uh, you know, it had been only been open for two weeks and they were still kind of working out some kinks here and there. For someone like us who loves Italian food, wine, and culture, it was Disney World. What we like to do on these tours is introduce people to how wine is made, you know, how ham is made and cured, how cheese is made. The beautiful thing about Fico is all under one roof is all of this. All right, it's gonna be awesome. It's, a, it's, it's like cutting edge stuff right here. It's gonna be good. And we got and to do some of that. We made cheese, or actually, yeah. you made cheese. Well, I had, you, you were helping. Right. Squacquerone, okay? Very difficult word even in Italian, so you did very well anyway. And it's one of the fresh cheese that uh, is prepared uh, uh, in this area. I had to dress like I was going into surgery or something, you know, and, and it's, it's a pretty, pretty sterile type environment you have to do. Yes, here we go. Cleanliness is next to cheesiness. actually pump the cheese. I mean, I was really, I was pumping like there was no tomorrow. I was pumping like there was no today. I think they got free help out of this is you what did, the deal was. You did a great job. I'm proud of you. Blessed are the cheese makers.
I've already spoken with uh, some of the operators in the parks so that they can prepare some nibbles for you, some, uh, some little things that you can taste uh, nibbles while... Uh, this uh, is awesome. Bologna, uh, uh, the tradition is in the half, half morning, so at about 11 o'clock, it's the good time to have a mortadella sandwich to prepare your stomach for lunch. But we're going to spend just a couple of minutes outside because this is the area dedicated uh, to our animals. As I said, uh, there are 200 animals over here, and uh, between them, there are races that we, we are trying to preserve because they're uh, disappearing in Italy. You're in Italy, you have to do it. You have plenty of time when you go back to burn those calories. The cream on top, uh, the milk at the bottom, the cream normally gets taken off to produce butter, and then in the morning, the same milk gets mixed with the one from the evening, and this is how uh, they produce uh, the Grana Padano and Parmigiano Reggiano. It's 10 year old Parmigiano Reggiano. The thing about FICO, this place is world class. And not only do they have cheese and meats and different things like that, but there's wine everywhere. As in Italy, there is wine everywhere. I stopped drinking years ago, but our people had a great wine class. While they did that, I kind of snuck off and did a little uh, gelato. I have not given up gelato. Uh, nor will I give up gelato. And uh, I might need a 12-step program for gelato. So when we take people to Tuscany, there's a place we always go and we make ravioli and we teach them how to make ravioli and how to do pasta. Everyone is always so amazed at how easy and simple it is and how much better that homemade pasta is. So when we're in Bologna, one of the classic dishes in that city is tortellini in brodo, which is tortellini in broth, and we wanted our guests to learn how to make tortellini. What they learned is making pasta is not as hard as it seems. And especially Lynn, who is one of our favorite travelers. She's been with us twice. And then you stick it together so it has that and whole. This, you... My tortellini, can I take it home? She's a nurse. She used to be head of nursing at uh, the Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson and actually saved a life on one of our trips. Uh, that's a story for another day. Tortellini, tortellini queenie. But Lynn is great <laughs> and she is so fun to travel with and she was the tortellini queenie. Fico was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in typical Italian markets, they're small, they're on the street, and you need a, maybe a little basket, and, and you walk around in a, you know, a 300 square foot space. Fico is so large, you don't, you don't use a shopping cart, you use a bike. <laughs> I mean, it was that big. They were really big. People were on bikes, and uh, that didn't go uh, unnoticed to us. You and I uh, typically don't have uh, any really competitive juices between us. 
But uh, something came out that day. There's something about riding a bicycle in a grocery store that brings out that competitive edge. Look, you and I have worked together for almost 20 years. We've never had a crossword. We have never had an argument. And we don't even really compete. I'm a food guy, you're an artist. But, but we wanted to win that day. Something came out in FICO. We had seen people all day long on bikes inside this building. It's so big and they were on bikes and they back and it got towards the end of the day. Our group was kind of chilling and we thought, well, you know what? Let's, I mean, how many opportunities yeah. do you have to get on a bike inside a world-class food market? You can't do it at Kroger. Yep. So we went up and we asked the lady, you know, can we, can we get a couple of bikes? We just want to ride for a few minutes and she would not give us a bike. She said, there were no bikes available. She wasn't gonna give us one and, and I begged and begged and begged and finally <laughs> she acquiesced and said, okay, go get those over there. <laughs> and, and there were a couple of bikes <laughs> over there and, and no one, you know, everybody else was on a bike and, and we learned pretty quickly why those bikes were yes. over there on their own. There was, there was, there was something wrong <laughs> with those bikes. I learned pretty quickly that it's much easier to pedal a bike without a seat than it is to pedal a bike without a wheel. Excuse me, you know what? This is what they said about it. The wheel nearly came off. So on this trip, the wheels literally came off. <laughs> it came off. <laughs> Your trike is now a bike. Look at her face. Okay. That's not good. No, it's not That's good. not good. <laughs> so, so we will leave this here and uh, go away. Oh, oh, oh. Leave this here and, and go just, away. <laughs> just please, seriously. Just go away. Go away. <laughs> right. Thank you. Appreciate hey. it. In the interest of the international relations, I want to give her a hug. I didn't break mine. He broke his. And a little competition. Uh, struck up with the FICO bikes, I won. I didn't have a wheel! <laughs> it was really an awesome place. It, it, it surpassed. I had high expectations, and it way surpassed those expectations. I had never seen anything like that. You know, uh, we made ravioli, um, there was a wine class, and to be honest with you, while y'all were in the wine class, I snuck off and had some gelato that was awesome. But just, if it's Italian food, if it's Italian wine, if it's Italian culture, down to different types of pastas and different types of meats, it's all covered in, in one place under one roof. And uh, there's, there's literally nothing like that in the world. And so for us to experience it, really two weeks after they opened and to be with uh, our guests who were with us and they got fun. to experience that place, uh, it, was, it was really a, a special day. Yeah. It was a great day at FICO. Uh, I started out riding a bicycle. I wound up riding a unicycle. We get on the bus, we're headed back. I didn't get a painting that day, but you know, there was a lot of graffiti. And in fact, uh, graffiti is an Italian word. And it's, it's, graffiti's been around since Egyptian days and you know, Rome. And uh, nowadays, instead of scratching things, they use a lot of spray cans. And, uh, it's 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 a very stylized kind of art form, and it's it's an expression of a kind of street urban art, and it's 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 an art form in its own.
One thing I've noticed about you in the 20 years we've worked together is when you are painting, you are focused and you are tuned in. I don't know what's going on right here, but we know it's dramatic. I mean, a lion attacking a snake, or maybe the other way around, on top of an antelope in a park in Italy. You are highly tuned into your subject, but you might not be really tuned in to what's going on around you. One thing that really helps is to not paint the individual leaves, but the pattern of the leaves that you see. Start with your darks and your mid-tones, look twice, paint once. And you had kind of an interesting experience and you were lucky that Anthony, our producer, cameraman, director, you, uh, big fella, mm -hmm. uh, actually uh, kind of added another uh, skill to his cameraman, director, uh, producer, and, and he became a bodyguard. I'm your security detail. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Security, yes, we had, we were, it was getting kind of nervous, you know, I, 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 I could kind of sense something was going on. Someone that keeps circling and watching. I just stood out. Let them be aware that you are aware. Exactly. And sometimes you think, well, I'm just paranoid, but sometimes paranoia is just another word for heightened awareness of what's going on around you. And that's what was happening that day. And it wasn't just that I was, I wasn't alone. There were people there with us. There were some ladies painting, and, and they were on bikes. These guys were, that were looking around, and, and there was a, the idea that maybe we were going to have a snatch and grab kind of purse thing. It's a big city, and these things are things you have to look out for in big cities, any big city. Actually, that's something Nate, the people who live here are not real crazy about, some of the crime. And actually, uh, actually, in the middle of that painting, I tried to while getting the painting done to get out of there and you know just get out of harm's way i try to use the tension of that moment to make a good painting we'll keep our awareness and really that's what you can get if, but the hard part is of course focusing it that kind of ignorance of what's happening it will give you the surprise at the end i'm just going over there parks are always they're arguing over who's going to rob us. Yes, I saw them first. And you're right, I don't know what's going on to the left or the right. Um, that's kind of the way it is when you paint. But Tell it ends me. up, these, these guys were kind of circling around yeah. and uh, they were bad actors and obviously had uh, bad intentions. Yeah, everything turned out well. All's well that ended well. Look twice, paint once. Yeah, looking at the orbiters. <laughs> It takes on a whole new takes on a whole new meaning here. Uh -huh. You have to be aware, just like the painting. If you went looking for a lion attacking a snake on top of an antelope, you would never find it. But here it is. See? Now we have we're working on the final. We're finalizing the painting of the Bolognese lion snake antelope in the park here. But you, you got out of there uh, alive with yes. your skin, with our producer, director, Anthony, and with a, a great painting. And I lived to paint another day. Painting in Bologna. It's done. We have cooked this enough. It was one of those palette to palette days mm -hmm. where we covered all the bases. Great food, y'all had great wine, you know, we made cheese, we made pasta, we had gelato. You got a great painting done. We're in this old world city and there's so much more to do. You know what I'm gonna remember? You won the bike race. I won.
things seen on today's program, plus many others, are featured in the An Italian Palate Cookbook. This beautiful volume also includes authentic Italian recipes. An Italian Palate Cookbook. Palate to Palate with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from Sanderson Farms. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you.